After a weird and chaotic season to open up CS2, G2 find themselves in a weird position. They have arguably the best player in the world in Munasi, and an aging but still effective superstar in Nico. They should be positioning themselves to vie for trophies, but throughout this year they struggled to do so outside of one outlier circumstance where they were able to capture some hardware with Stewie 2K at IEM Dallas. But other than that, they failed to do so. So going into the player break, it was clear that some changes needed to be made, but the question was how would they go about it? Would it be finally time to part ways with longtime in-game leader Hooksy? Would it be Nexa or Hunter heading to the bench? Would G2 look to sign more firepower or reformat the roster around a possible new in-game leader like Nico himself? These were the questions that we had coming into the first week of the player break. And somehow, despite all odds, Hooksy has managed to keep his job, Nexa has been sent to the bench, and with the announcement yesterday, we know who the new piece is to come in and try and make G2 a winning core. And that's the young superstar rifler from M80, Malbs. Now on paper, there's really not much to hate about this move. Malbs is one of the best young players in the game, he spent all the previous season terrorizing tier 2 like no other, so it makes sense that you would want to pick him up for your team, and he makes G2 a much more lethal core than they were previously, there's no doubt. However, Counter-Strike in the server can be much different than what's put on the paper. We don't know if this is necessarily the right move, and there are definitely some questions and concerns going in. So today, we're going to try and answer the question of whether G2 have done enough to make themselves title contenders with this move or not. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you guys take a second, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It helps out immensely in the YouTube algorithm. Many of you watch these videos are not subscribed, so make sure you do it. While you're down there, consider becoming a channel member for five bucks a month. You can support me directly in what we do here, gain access to videos like these the night before everyone else, as well as a shout out at the end of every video. And lastly, make sure you check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash lionhearts1337. I stream Sunday through Friday, 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come hang out with me as we play some Counter-Strike, some Destiny, sometimes some Elden Ring, all that good stuff. And let's get started with the commentary. All right, so when we look at these roster changes, the things I like to consider are obviously the on-paper stats, how the new player has performed compared to who's leaving, how well the new player fits the team, what kind of roles can they play, what kind of shuffling of roles needs to happen to accommodate this new player. And then we can talk a little bit about the intangibles, play styles, things that aren't going to immediately show up on paper, but you see when you watch the demos and you watch how these players actually interact with each other. Now obviously right out the gate, the numbers are fantastic. You go and look at Malb's HLTV page and it looks wonderful. Even just the last six months, you look at all the games he's played, he's at a 1.32 rating, averaging nearly a kill per round and nearly 100 ADR. These are insanely good stats. Anything above like a 1.25, you're starting to enter superstar territory. That's the kind of production we're talking about. Now keep in mind, this production is across both online and LAN matches, and being that M80 is not exactly a high tier organization, this is against a lot of pretty bad competition, especially considering what he's stepping into. G2 are a top 10 team in the world. They're gonna be at all the biggest tournaments. They're gonna be playing the best teams and the best players in the world. This is going to be a step up, a drastic step up in competition for Malbs. So while yes, he has been absolutely annihilating tier two, as I've said time and time again, there is a marked, noticeable difference between tier two and tier one Counter-Strike. So one thing we do have to keep consider and keep in the back of our minds is will Malbs make a seamless transition to this higher tier competition? That's definitely a concern. If I wanted to be bad faith, and I must stress, this is a bad faith hypothetical, but if I wanted to make a comparison, I mean, when Liquid were looking to get Skulls, Skulls had really, really good stats against his local competition, against the Tier 2 of Brazil. He looked really, really good. But he makes his transition to a Tier 1 organization, playing Tier 1 competition, and suddenly he struggles. He doesn't translate to the same player that we saw in those online matches when he moves to land and he's playing against legit competition. That is always a possibility with these young, unproven talents. Malbs could easily slot into G2, and despite how good he looks on M80, he could struggle to make up for his prior production in this new environment. One thing we can do to try and assuage these concerns is look a little closer at the stats as well as the eye test to see if there are any indicators that Malbs is legit or not to make this transition to the next level. So one thing I would look for when looking through his stats and his performances is how well does Malbs do against tier one teams when he's played them. He's not had many chances to do so over the last year, but when he's done it, one, he absolutely trounced Team Liquid in every matchup he showed up in. It's actually like really, really bad how badly he was beating down on Team Liquid. I will add an asterisk, Team Liquid, that new roster with Kadeen, it never arrived. There's some big names there, but that team definitely underperformed expectations. But hey, that's not Malbs' fault. He had to show up on the server, he clicked those heads, he made them look silly, and that's not his fault whatsoever. 
Past those online matches against Team Liquid, though, it does get a little bit thin in terms of matches against top 10 opposition. Unfortunately, he just hasn't had a whole lot of opportunity to show us on that kind of stage. He's only been to a few high-tier lands, and when he's been there, M80 as a team weren't really that good, so they didn't go that far. Most recently in IEM Dallas, M80 got trounced by Heroic. Malv's played okay in that best of three, but failed to get above a 1.0 rating. They looked outclassed as a team there, so I'm not going to hold that much against them. He also got trounced by FaZe previously in a best of one. Yeah, that makes sense. FaZe as a team are just way better than M80. That's just going to be a tough environment to perform in regardless. Funnily enough, Malbs' performances on LAN have been very good against the team that just signed him. He's been incredible against G2 in the few times they've played, averaging like a 1.25 plus rating and winning two best of three series against G2 during that time. It'd be pretty funny if that was kind of why they considered signing him is they got absolutely whooped by Malbs and G2 were like, I like, I like that guy. We, we should get him. So in terms of games against Tier 1 opposition, there's not much to go off of, but what we've seen of Malms has definitely looked solid. And moving on to the eye test, when I watch this guy play, there's definitely the markers of a player who looks like he's legit. His movement, his map awareness is really good. His aim is smooth. He's not super jittery or relying on, like, high effort flicks. He has a very good deagle. He's obviously a very good rifler. And he does all that while being a relatively aggressive player. And he's definitely coming up with this new school of riflers who are playing much more aggressive. Players like Donk, for example. He's not as good as Donk, but he plays along similar lines. He's going to play very in your face. He's going to take proactive map control. He wants to take duels, and he knows he's good enough to win those duels most of the time. All in all, the package for Malbs looks really good. I think G2 have definitely gotten an incredible young talent, someone that can really blossom into a great player. The question now is, is this G2 roster the right fit for Malbs? Because going into this, we have to consider what G2 are leaving behind. Nexa exiting to the bench. Nexa was an anchor player, a slower player, someone who was taking a lot of the support roles alongside Hooksy to enable Hunter, to enable Munasi, to enable Nico. They are now losing that and bringing in another star player, someone who's going to want star player roles and star player support. So that means that G2 needs to reshuffle how they play. Who is going to step back and pick up Nexa's spots? Because stylistically, I don't think anyone else on the roster except maybe Hooksy himself can do it. Which is a bit of a major concern, because right now, I don't think G2 can go ahead and just keep running the same systems they were before and just slot in Malbs and he's just going to play Nexa's spots. That's probably not going to happen. Someone needs to take up those spots so that Malbs can get what he wants. And the question is, Malbs being an aggressive player, Nico being a traditionally aggressive player, does this make the whole team want to shift into a more aggressive playstyle? Are we going to start to see G2 maybe try and play like old school Furia, like 2019 Furia, where they were overly aggressive, everyone was pushing constantly, and they were just in your face. And when it works, it's insane. It's a snowball. They run you over. But if you're too aggressive and you don't really play around defaults that much, if you get fouled out, there's not much to be done. You're losing players too early into the round. So it's definitely a risk-reward playstyle. Really, ultimately, my concern is actually around Hooksy, because already Hooksy struggles as an individual player, and if you're going to ask him to now uh, take more anchor roles, take some of the spots Nexa was playing, is that going to further put a burden on him to where he continues to even perform worse as an individual than he already does? And is that going to interrupt his calling style as well? I really do think that if Malbs is coming in, G2 should still be looking to make part ways with Hooksy and finding some kind of new in-game leader, whether it's moving over to Nico or moving on to someone else. I think that this is going to put a lot of pressure on Hooksy that might make it a lot harder for him to perform in his duties. The way they could get around this, though, is to embrace maybe a changeup in how the team operates. Hooksy is still going to be the in-game leader on paper, but you move to a more simple default playstyle. You're not worrying about so many set strategies, maybe you have like two or three depending on the map, and then you worry about playing around mid-rounds. You allow your insane rifling core of Malbs and Nico, backed up by Munsey, to make plays happen. You have Nico and Hooksy making mid-round calls together, and you essentially play more or less every round by ear. Obviously, Kerrigan is famous for playing this way. This is also famously how like the 2015 Fnatic team would play with all of Meister and Crims. They were not very complicated at all. They relied on the fact that they had so many good players at pretty much every position that they could just kind of make any round work despite what happened to them. I could see G2 trying to go down that path, and it could be very successful. It just really depends on how well the players buy into that kind of shift in system. And again, if we're moving to that kind of system where hook seers relied less and less to be making uh, complicated strats and leading the team, I once again put forth 
that makes him less and less valuable as a player. And you should just consider replacing him and letting Nico call maybe instead. Overall, I think it's hard to deny how good of a move this is in terms of just the raw talent added to the roster, but I do think it's not a perfect fit. This does not immediately make G2 like a top four, top three team in the world. And I think if anything, this could be the catalyst to maybe see Hooksy heading out of this team in the next few months. I think they're really gonna have to change it to accommodate Malms. I think this is gonna put extra pressure on Hooksy and we're gonna get to the point where his play is just not gonna be tolerable and G2 are gonna have to make another change. It's definitely one step forward, but I feel like G2 are still short one more piece to make a truly best in the world lineup out of what they have. And they need to start doing it sooner rather than later because right now Munasi is playing out of his mind. Nico isn't getting any younger and they need to capitalize on this championship window while we still have what is really a relatively weak top 10 where anyone could be winning these tournaments right now. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know how you guys feel about this trade in the comments down below. Would you have made a different move for G2? Do you think that they need to move away from Hooksy and bring in another piece? Do you think another in-game leader could be doing the job better? Or would you experiment with Nico at this point in his career? I'm really curious to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments down below. I'll be down there responding as per usual. Thank you guys so much for the support recently. Obviously, I went missing for like a week uh, by accident. Um, long story short, I, I had some issues logging into my account. It, Google takes a while to reset these things. And I was locked out of my uh, Google account for like four days, which was uh, dumb and uh, made me late to get to this news. But you know, here we are, better late than never. Thankfully, you guys uh, really like my content regardless, and I don't have to necessarily be the fastest of these things, which is a really cool feeling. All right, then. We'll be back with more videos coming soon. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Make sure you consider becoming a channel member for five bucks a month. You can support what we do here. Linked in the description. Check me out on Twitch. All that good stuff. I'll see you guys soon. Hopefully, you guys have a great weekend. And yeah, peace.